Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're going to change out the ball joint, specifically the lower ball joint, on my 2001 Mazda B3000. This procedure is going to be the same for most vehicles with lower ball joints. Make sure your ball joint is a pressable ball joint. Sometimes ball joints are permanently pressed from the factory, so you have to replace the whole control arm with the ball joint in it. The lower ball joint on my truck is serviceable. Meanwhile, the upper ball joint is not. You actually have to buy the whole control arm with the ball joint in it already and replace the whole thing, which I'll also be doing, but in a different video. Here's everything I used for the job. Over here, super important, you need a ball joint press. I rented this for free from Advance Auto. You could rent it from any major auto parts store. You're gonna end up needing some type of hammer, a couple of different size wrenches, a breaker bar, pliers and needle nose pliers is definitely helpful, ratchet, different size sockets and extensions, thread locker, a grease gun, some penetrating fluid, and a torque wrench to torque everything. Also, I have a list of all the torques that are gonna be in the description below. You could check them out. Also, can't forget about the ball joint. Here's the ball joint model that I got for my truck. I want to thank Auto Parts Warehouse for sending this to me. And now let's go install it in the truck. This is going to be the long, in-depth video where I go into a lot of detail. If you want to see a shorter overview video, the link is in the description below. Before we lift the truck up, we're going to have to take this cover off and get to the axle nut in here. And we're going to have to take the axle nut off. It's a 32 millimeter axle nut. So just use your screwdriver, flathead screwdriver right here, and unscrew these three bolts on the outside of this cover to get this cover off. This cover will just pop off. And then there's your axle nut. Get a little penetrating fluid in there. That'll help you out when you're taking this off. Get my 32 millimeter socket. You're going to need a lot of torque, so use a breaker bar. A pneumatic impact wrench would be a lot easier, but I'm showing you that you can get this job done with basic hand tools. Before jacking the car up, make sure you take your lug nuts off. Good, the axle nuts off and our lug nuts are loose, let's lift the car. I have jack stands plus my jack supporting the truck and the rear wheels are blocked off. Always give your car a shake to ensure that it's stable and safe to work on while it's lifted off the ground. And now we can begin. To get this job done we're going to unbolt the caliper and we're going to move it to the side. We're going to unbolt the upper control arm from the knuckle and the lower control arm from the knuckle. My goal is to not remove the tie rod and keep it connected so then this will all just move off to the side and then I'll have access to that ball joint right there, be able to press it out. I'm gonna spray all the nuts and bolts we'll need to remove with the penetrating fluid. Spray the lower ball joint because we'll have to press this out later. Spray the lower and upper caliper bracket bolts. Also spray the upper control arm nut and bolt. And don't forget the lower control arm nut. Now we'll remove the caliper by taking off the caliper bracket bolts. So I'm gonna use a 15 millimeter with a little bit of an extension on it. And then I'm gonna attach a breaker bar to this. And once that bolt is broke, we could use a regular ratchet. Good. Now I'll do the same for the bottom bolt, except I won't need the extension. Use the breaker bar, break the bolt, and get your ratchet, finish it up. Other bolts out. Get some type of bucket, and what this is going to do is when the caliper comes off, because it's almost ready to come off, you could rest it right down on the bucket. You don't want your brake caliper to be hanging by the brake line, because that's how you damage your brake line. And you can see, the brake line is still loose, and this has a nice spot to sit, which is out of my way. And so you don't lose the bolts, just put the bolts right into the caliper bracket. So now we will remove the nut on the lower control arm ball joint. First step, remove this cotter pin. I'm using a needle nose pliers. All you have to do is get these straight enough so that you can pull them out. This nut is a 15 16 We'll get the breaker bar on it and break it loose. Got the castle nut off, so now we're going to take off the upper control arm ball joint bolt that connects the ball joint to the knuckle. It's 15 millimeter. You just get your ratchet on one side and a wrench on the other. Keep the bolt and nut together. So now I'll get a crowbar up underneath the control arm and against the frame so I could lift it up. As I lift, this is going to pop out. I sprayed a bunch of penetrating oil in here too and let it sit so this makes it nice and easy. I know this is going to come out pretty easy but if it doesn't you just put a piece of wood on your knuckle and you get a hammer 
and you hammer down as you lift up on the crowbar. But I don't have to do that. I just have to lift. And that's going to come right out. With this out, you want to make sure that the knuckle isn't pulling on anything. You can see there's some tension on this ABS wire. Not too much, but I'm going to move around the knuckle. So I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit. Now I have more wiggle room. Now we're going to remove the lower ball joint. But before we do that, I'm putting a bucket over here. And what that's going to do is allow me to take this and rest it on there. Just like what we did with the brake calipers. Now the axle should come right out. Keep the axle in the car because then your differential fluid will start coming out if you try pulling this out. So now you might want to try to get some bungee cord or something to get the axle out of the way. I have the axle bungee corded up so we have plenty of access to our lower ball joint. Now let's get working to press this out. I'm going to just spray down the area with some brake clean. Now you see what we have to work with? We have to get this snap ring out. They make a special pliers that you could use, but you could also use just a regular needle nose pliers just in case you don't have the snap ring pliers. Here's what snap ring pliers look like. You can see when you press on the pliers, it opens it up instead of closes it. But because many people might not have these types of pliers, but most people have needle nose pliers, I'm going to use needle nose pliers to show you that it'll work. So as you do this, what you want to do is break the, uh, the seal a little bit because it's going to be a little bit tough to get off. Now that the snap rings off, we can start pressing. So here's the ball joint press that we have. I have the new ball joint, so that's how we're going to figure out what size we're going to use. I'm going to try to use one with an opening so that you guys can see what's going on. But pretty much you want to make sure that the whole ball joint will fit in here. So what's going to happen is you're going to press the ball joint and it's going to fall right into this. So there's the bottom of the ball joint. You can see this fits around it. So it's not touching the ball joint, it's just leaning against the control arm. To see how to use a ball joint press in depth, check out my other video with the link in the description below. I'm just going to tighten this down onto the top of the ball joint. I'm going to try to get it centered. That is pressing on the top of the ball joint. The ball joint is going to pop downwards. Now if you have an impact wrench, that would be perfect for this because then you just zoom zoom, done. I'm going to use regular tools, so I'm just going to use a, a breaker bar and a socket that goes over this. This uses a 7 8 socket and we're going to be tightening it. And that ball joint is out. Before you put the new ball joint in, just use some brake clean and you're going to clean out where the ball joint sits. So this is how I have the lower ball joint set up to get pushed in. You can see here's the lower ball joint and then here's this round piece that fits exactly on this seat right here. And then in order to push on this piece, we need a piece on the bottom. So now we're going to use one of these at the top. You can see this piece fits over it and that's going to go on here. I want to make sure there's enough clearance from here down because you're going to have to use this upside down compared to what you're doing before. On the ball joint itself, it says mount inward, so we want to put this on the inside of the car. So like that, get our ball joint. Make sure the inside is facing that way. Get that in there. Put our cap on right here. Make sure that's centered. Good, it's snug down. Because this is so close to the ground, there's no way I could get a breaker bar in here. So I'm using a 7 8 wrench, but when I have it in here with one wrench, it's really hard to turn. So I've showed you guys this before. What you do is you take another wrench like that, and now you just extended your wrenches. You press this until you can't turn your wrenches anymore, and then we'll go check it. So we just lower it. The ball joint is pressed perfectly. So right as there starts to get too much resistance, you know the ball joint is starting to seat. So you should check it out and that split ring is going to fit on just right. When we took this off, it was facing this direction. So I'm going to put it back on in this direction. Again, I'm using regular needle nose pliers just to show you that it's possible with regular common tools. Now I'm going to put the grease fitting on the top using a 10 millimeter. Simply screw it in by hand first. and then tighten it. You don't want to over tighten this 
So now that's getting tight, you always want this to face away so that you can get a grease gun in here. I'm going to angle it just a little bit to the rear so that I can get a grease gun just by turning the steering wheel. So you saw I painted the lower control arm. I also painted the knuckle. I go a little bit overboard sometimes. That's just how I like to do it. Make sure everything is rust free and looks good. If you want to, now's a good time to put some anti-seize on the threads here. I'm not going to because I had no problem taking this off. So now we have to try to get this lower control arm ball joint stud and get it into the lower part of the knuckle. And then once you get it on, get your castle nut and get it screwed on just a little bit so that you can let go of the control arm. I have that hand tightened. Before I tighten that all the way, I want to try to get this in. This ball joint is no good, needs to be replaced as well. That video will be in the link in the description below. To give me a hand, I'm using a jack, and the jack is going to jack the whole knuckle up for me. So then I could get this right where it needs to be with the control arm. So then just lift up the control arm, slide the knuckle in, just using a rubber mallet. You really don't have to hit it hard. Good. To see if the upper control arm is completely in, just go and look at the hole in here, and you can see it's completely clear. So now I'm gonna put the bolt in. So now that the thread is sticking through, I'm gonna put the nut on. Okay, once you get that on there tight, torque it down to 35 to 46 foot-pounds. I'm gonna use 43. It's on the upper end of the scale, so 43 foot-pounds. Good. Now we can tighten the nut to the lower ball joint. I'm gonna hand tighten this the rest of the way up. What we're gonna wanna do is tighten this down to 82 to 113 foot-pounds in that range. That's the range they give us. I'll do 100, making it even 100 foot-pounds. And then we'll put the cotter pin in. You don't wanna back this off, so if you miss the hole that you can see right there, then you just tighten it some more. The castle nut that's on the lower control arm ball joint is 27 millimeters. This is 28 millimeters and I don't want to round it, so a trick that you could do, you just get a paper towel and you put it on the inside and that'll give you an extra snug fit. Unfortunately, I have 28 millimeter, not 27, so this will have to do. Okay, torque that to 100 foot-pounds. Let's go see where the cotter pin hole is. It looks like that hole is just about there. I'm gonna try to fit the cotter pin in and see if it's good enough. Good. It'll make it right through. And then you take your needle nose pliers and you bend each side of the cotter pin around the nut. Just like that, so it doesn't move anywhere. And now we're done with that, so let's get the caliper back on. So you can see these caliper bolts have red Loctite on them. That's the stuff that's really tough to get off. If you want, you could use some removable Loctite. That's what I'm gonna use. Just add a little bit, like so. with the caliper on, but not pushed all the way back. I'm gonna find the area where I need to put the bolt, and I'll put the bolt in. And the reason I'll do that is because this could be tough to align. Now I can see where I need to get aligned. You can see, that's perfect right there. So I'll just tighten it a little bit so that it's in the caliper bracket. Now I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit more so that's not gonna go anywhere. Don't tighten it all the way because we still need to align the bottom one. The bottom caliper bolt will align a lot easier. I'll snug it and then it has to get torqued. The caliper mount bolts get torqued to 85 foot-pounds. That was the top one. And that was the bottom one. Before we put the car on the ground and tighten the axle nut, remember to put your ABS sensor line back in its holder so it doesn't move around. With everything assembled, now I'll grease the lower ball joint. Get some grease in there. It's already pre-greased so you're just gonna need a little bit extra good. So we're on our final steps here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some thread locker for the axle nut and I'm going to just put a little bit of this removable thread locker. Just a little bit in there. And that'll just help secure it because there's a lot of vibrations that go through this. This is going to have to get torqued down but before we do that we'll just hand tighten it and then we'll put the wheel on.
with all the lugs tightened, we'll drop the truck. Your lug nuts get torqued to 100 foot-pounds. Your axle nut gets torqued to 162 to 205 foot-pounds. Okay, that's nice and tight. And now just get the lug nuts. And we are done. That's how you change out one of these lower bowl joints. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. I publish how-to videos weekly, and I answer all the questions and comments you guys leave below. On the screen will be some videos popping up. You can click on the screen, or you can click on the links in the description for those videos. If you use Facebook or Twitter, check out the links in the description below for the Chris Fix Facebook and Twitter pages. And finally, I want to thank Auto Parts Warehouse for sending me a ball joint so I could install it in my truck. The link to the ball joint that I installed is in the description below.